Now time for our Ask the Doctor segment. You send us the questions and we ask the doctor right here on air and get you answers. Dr. Caitlin Merkin, a surgeon with Mercy Bariatric and General Surgery is here. Thanks for being here. Sure. So last time you were here, we answered a question about pre-diabetes and after that we had a viewer, Louise, write in about registered dietitians. Tell us, what does a dietitian do and who might need one? Yeah, so a registered dietitian has actually completed a very rigorous uh, educational program and they've completed and passed a national exam exam and have a certification. So mm -hmm. they are very knowledgeable in uh, nutrition and different nutrition plans for different health problems. So particularly if you have things like diabetes, heart disease, or obesity, you're often sent to a nutritionist to kind of help you follow a diet that can help you um, exist with that disease better. Yeah, and like I mentioned earlier in the break, we kind of do our own sort of guess and checking at home, but a dietitian probably just solves some of my issues a lot quicker. There are professionals out there. Yes, <laughs> and that's why they're here. Okay, Avery says, it seems like a lot of people get strep throat in the winter. How big of, of a concern is strep throat this year, and is there anything we can do to prevent getting strep? So strep throat has been on the rise for the past couple of years. Um, it's a sore throat that's caused by a bacteria instead of a virus, so antibiotics are effective against it. Mm -hmm. But again, with any infectious disease, prevention is a huge component of it. So we want to think about good hand hygiene, washing our hands mm -hmm. frequently, especially before we eat. Um, if you're going to sneeze or cough, do it into a tissue and throw it away right away. Yeah. Or if you don't have one, into your elbow. Um, but, and then just kind of avoiding sharing utensils and things like that. Yeah, super simple tips that can keep you really healthy all around. Yeah. Uh, Doug says he's been recommended to get tested for autism, but he's an older adult. Is there any point in getting tested since I'm not a young kid in school? I mean, we do know that it's the kindergarten age through the early elementary ages that people really get tested and diagnosed. Yeah, so Doug, I would actually encourage you to get tested. If you're a little nervous, you can do some free screening questionnaires online. Um, but a, a, autism presents a little differently in adults. Most mm -hmm. adults have unknowingly adopted um, ways to kind of hide their autistic traits or manage them. And seeing a professional can do a couple of things. One, autism is often co-commitment with other psychiatric disorders, so they can help treat that if you have one. Mm -hmm. But two, they can help you understand why you experience the world differently than other people and give you tools to kind of overcome challenges that are unique to you and help you play up your strengths. So it's definitely something worth looking into. Yeah, we do know it is a spectrum too, so you can yeah. really land anywhere on that. Some good tips for Doug there. August says, I'm curious about this one too, every time I fly I get sinus issues. What can I do to keep that from happening? I mean, sometimes I get off the plane and I feel like I have something. Yeah, well, one, you are exposed to a lot of people in an airport. That's True. one thing you might yeah. But the sinus pressure comes from changes in the pressure, particularly with takeoff and landing. Mm -hmm. um, and you get a big buildup of pressure. So the one thing you can do is try to stimulate the eustachian tubes of the ear. And you can do that by sipping water with takeoff and landing mm -hmm. or chewing gum yes. and see if that helps a little bit. You can also try some nasal sprays um, and then just try to avoid flying if you are congested because it just kind of makes it worse. Yes, honestly. Honestly, sometimes you hear the coughing or the sneezing on the plane and you're like, I'm stuck here for the next couple of hours. So good tips. All right. Thanks, Caitlin. If you want to ask Dr. Merkin a question, just go to our website, submit your questions at firstalert4.com slash ask the doctor. You can get all your questions answered right here on the air during our next Ask the Doctor segment. And stay with us here on